and welcome to the Freakish Lemon video podcast. I am your host, the Freakish Lemon. I go by Adrian and I use masculine pronouns. Welcome to any new viewers. Thank you so much for clicking on whatever you clicked on to get here and welcome back all my returning viewers. Thanks so much for following along with this thing that I do. This is a crafty type podcast coming to you from the Northwest Hills of Connecticut and you can find show notes and transcripts for this episode and some of the previous episodes I'm working on transcripts uh, over at FreakishLemon.com or FreakishLemonPodcast.com. They go to the same place. Um, we have a group on Ravelry. Just search Freakish Lemon in the groups tab and you will find us. And if you want to follow me at on any of the fun places like Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, or Ravelry, I am there as Freakish Lemon. Uh, all the links to these things will be in the down bar here on YouTube or around here if you're watching this somewhere else. And please remember to subscribe here on YouTube if you're interested in following along with what I'm doing um, and when I post new episodes. I am filming this on Sunday, December 2nd. Uh, I'm going to try to make a point to tell you when I'm filming it uh, going forward because I don't know when this episode will be posted because time is difficult to predict and uh doing the close captioning on these episodes takes some extra time so crossing my fingers that this episode is out before friday and i think i'm crooked hang on i don't know what's happening it's been a month since i filmed i don't know what to do um if you are a returning viewer to the show you can uh one, see that I'm in a different location. I'm in a different corner of my bedroom because my bedroom has been Christmasified and there's a tree where I normally um, film over there in the corner. So I can't put my chair over there. Um, and this seemed like the easiest corner to set up in so I can just throw a bunch of stuff on my bed instead of trying to find places to put things. Um, also, I'm filming on a new phone. I uh, just upgraded my phone because it was cheaper to upgrade than it was to continue using my old phone. Um, so if the focus is off or it sounds different or whatever, that's the reason why. It's a new phone and it's an upgraded phone. So yeah, I haven't figured it all out yet. So we start this episode out with a bit of podcast stuff. There's not a whole heck of a lot of podcast stuff. Since it's December, it's the last month of the 2018 Blanket Make-Along. If you go over to the Groups tab on Ravelry and search for our group, um, we have a thread where we're posting blanket progress updates because blankets take a long time and it's nice to have somewhere where you can get some encouragement. If you guys want to do this again next year, feel free to let me know and I'll put a thread up for 2019 because um, there likely won't be an episode out before the new year. Uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, if you want to have another blanket make along thread up for 2019, I would be happy to put that thread into effect um, because it is nice to share progress on blankets. Um, and I think I've talked about this in previous episodes, that I'm kind of doing these episodes monthly for a little while. Um, going off script, I don't have this as a bullet point in my notes. Um, but, yeah, it's, for a full episode, it is easier for me to do it monthly, especially doing the captioning and transcripts um, for each episode. Uh, but it occurred to me today, trying to set up everything, that it's kind of... A lot of stuff to talk about it once a month. Um, so I was thinking maybe floating the idea of a shorter video in the um, every two weeks uh, interval. I'm not describing that well at all. So there's a monthly and then like halfway through the month there would be a shorter video. Would anybody be interested in that? Would you like to just see works in progress? 
Because that's what I think that kind of video, like more of like a vlog style, like here's what I'm working on and how far I've gotten um, type of thing, not quite so much the sit down and talk production. Um, <laughs> maybe just demonstrate the state of my craft room this week, uh, which is always an interesting uh, endeavor to do. Um, but yeah, just so it's not there's not as much pressure on me every month to get everything into the video. So if you guys want to, if you guys are cool with a, you know, a shorter vlog type thing, um, you know, less than 10 minutes, 10, let's be real, 10 to 15 minutes, um, that would be easier for me to close caption and transcribe, uh, at the midpoint between months. Um, let me know if you're interested in that as well. That was just kind of an idea I had this morning as I was lugging all of the things and trying to make sure I had everything in my notes. Um, so, yeah. Let me know your thoughts on that. Um, and then before I get to finished objects and stuff, I just wanted to briefly mention the sweater because I know you haven't seen it since probably, like, July. Um, but I am wearing a sweater that I made for myself with my LK150 knitting machine. This is the Sweater Blank Sweater uh, by Renee Callahan. Um, this is the first one I did with the neckline adjustment. So the, the body and sleeves are a size large, but the neck is a size medium. This is out of Lion Brand Scarfy yarn, uh, which is a wool acrylic blend, I believe. It's primarily acrylic. Uh, which is why as soon as it was finished it was shoved into a drawer never to be seen again because we had a, a supremely hot and humid summer this year so I couldn't even look at it. It just went in a drawer. And right now it's even a little hot to wear but it's not one that you will see often and I know it hasn't been one that you've seen for more than like a brief second as I like showed it to you and threw it into a drawer. So just wanted to make sure that if there were any questions about this sweater <laughs> uh, I do have a project for it on my Ravelry page because I do try to keep up with that. Um, but yeah, if you are making a sweater um, and it needs to have acrylic content for, you know, washability, this is a pretty good yarn to use. It comes in really big skeins because you're supposed to be able to make a scarf out of one of them. So I just kind of alternated them so that it was kind of stripey. Um, yeah, so let's move on to finished objects, uh, because there's a pile of stuff around me, um, because I have been able to do a lot of knitting over the past month. Um, I've done that thing where I'm working on items in a variety of needle sizes and yarns and switching between continental and English style knitting. Um, so I've been able to make a lot of progress on things. And also I have some sewing finished objects, which are relatively quick compared to knitting projects. So the first uh, finished object is my Marled Magic Shawl, which is a pattern by Stephen West. Um, I use a US 6 four millimeter needle, and this is done using holding um, hand spun yarn together with a commercial yarn and you can see I've I've used up pretty much all of my first hand spun which is great because that's the stuff that you spin you go I'll use this later and then you come back to it and you're like why why is this here um I did the regular size version. Um, there is a version where you can add some extra panels to make it larger. Sorry, my notes went to sleep. Um, but since I was doing this in kind of a DK weight hand spun with fingering weight, it kind of blocked out ginormous. This is my new uh, movie theater shawl that I bring to the movies with me. Our movie theater is a little six screen theater and it's little because it's in Torrington, Connecticut, which is uh, not <laughs> a bustling metropolis. Um, and the two screens on the end 
have an outer cement wall that kind of proved to be a heat sink in the winter. So uh, it's good to bring a blanket with you <laughs> if you're going to the movies and you happen to be in those uh, thing, those um, screens. So this is my new, my new movie theater shawl. Also, it's the one that I wear around the house. Um, it's just really squishy and warm and absolutely a great way to use up old hand spun if you have it because uh, one, it's a very textured shawl so your uh, imperfections in your spinning uh, <laughs> um, are kind of disguised a little bit. I say imperfections because new spinners do by accident thick and thin a lot of the time and then when you try to do that on purpose it's really hard so just so you know but it, it gives a great texture and marling it with a commercial yarn can uh, forgive a lot of weird color blending from your hand spun if it doesn't make any sense the only thing I changed from the pattern is this I-cord bind off I did do the I-cord bind off as it was written but this is I didn't have enough hand spun left in one color to do the I cord, so I'm holding together five commercial yarns <laughs> in a fingering weight, um, which makes a really chunky um, I cord bind off, which is, I think, really structural, structurally great for a heavier shawl like this. So that's my Marled Magic shawl. One of these days I'll actually get it photographed and put up on Instagram, but right now it's too wet and gross outside to do that. I also finished a machine knit shawl for my machine knit shawl shapes project that I'm doing. This is um, what I'm currently calling my sideways triangle shawl. Uh, and that shawl, it starts from here increasing to the middle and then decreasing out to the end. I used two yarns for this. Oh, blurring. Two yarns for this. The visible on the front is the is um, from Fresh from the Cauldron. You can't really read the whole label. Um, in their radioactive um, graduated skein. So it started from this green and ends of this kind of rusty red. And I used a technique for machine knitting called plating, um, which is actually really cool. It's like holding two yarns together, but one of them is always in the front and one of them is always in the back. So I backed this radioactive yarn with um, just some Knit Picks uh, palette black in the fingering, um, which is, it's blowing out a lot here, partially because of these studio lights and also the window behind me. but. It does kind of give it this shadow effect. Let's see if I can get real close. There we go. You can kind of see the black knit stitches behind the green ones, which is really cool. And it makes it thicker and squishier without, you know, really changing the top yarn all that much. So that's pretty cool. Um, this one has been photographed. I just have to go through those photographs. I did post a picture of Penny wearing it though. So every time I take a shawl out to photograph, Penny needs to wear it. That's not my decision. She looks at me with those puppy eyes. She wants me to put the shawl on her so she can ham it up for the camera because otherwise she hates the camera. She's a weird dog. So that's that. And I have plans to do one more in that style um, to kind of finalize my notes on it before I write it up. Come on, notes, wake back up. Then the rest of my finished objects are sewing projects. Uh, I mentioned, oh, I'm not in focus, hello. I mentioned last episode that I was going to create my own version of the Ritual Dyes Knitter's Backpack um, 
Uh, there's a link to it in the show notes, uh, but it's basically like a tote bag that you can wear as a backpack. Um, my sister has one, and our friend Lauren has one, and when we were at Rhinebeck, I saw the, you know, them used out in the wild, and they do hold a lot, and it was something that I was interested in making and adding a few tweaks. So the first thing I did was, you know, get all the measurements from my sisters and make up a mock-up. So this is using some of that hand-dyed curtain fabric. Um, I took an old plaid curtain and I dyed it blue. And uh, I'm still working on my cotton dyeing techniques because these fabrics all still bleed when heat is applied, so I'm figuring it out. So I figured I'd use it as a, a kind of a mock-up. So these straps are much wider than they needed to be. Um, but I learned a lot from doing this, um, specifically this whole strap and loop um, construction, and that I needed to rethink where my straps are set. I basically filled this with yarn so it wasn't quite so floppy, um, and these straps kind of went around to the sides. You can see they go way too far out from that center back seam. That center back seam is supposed to line up like with your spine when you're wearing it as a backpack. So they were way too far out. But I did learn a lot and um, here's my flap that's in place of a pocket. Uh, and I did test out um, some seam finishing for the inside because the original one does just have these edges. They're not enclosed seams. They're finished, but not enclosed. Didn't actually end up using that technique, but I learned a lot of, about the construction from doing this, but I got all the pieces the right size, except for the straps, but I was going to be using um, pre-made straps anyway for that. So there's my mock-up. And here is the finished object. So let me put a couple of things in it because it's easier to show you that. If there's a couple of things in there. So here it is. I used <laughs> threads and dog hair everywhere. I used a green canvas. Um, it's just a duck canvas from Joanne Fabrics because I had a coupon. Um, with brown belting, I had a bit of scrap brown leather. The belting is actually wider than what the Ritual Dyes actual bags have. They have a one inch strap. These are one and a half inches. Um, the top stitching on the, there's kind of like a facing for the inside here. Uh, is different because, again, I was making this on my home machine and theirs has a line here and a line here, but trying to get through this chunk uh, was really, really difficult. And I was using a denim needle with upholstery thread because um, at that point you have your main piece, your um, your facing, your leather, and also I installed a zipper pocket in the back here. So there's two layers of cotton and two layers of canvas. Um, so I was not gonna do that top stitching at the very top. I just was gonna do the top stitching and my top stitching isn't the greatest. You can tell where I had to kind of shift the bag around. I don't know if it's gonna focus. Here we go. Shift the bag around um, because the, the kind of line of stitches jogs a little bit. And that's because of this strap construction. It, it attaches here and then through this loop to the back and it is a pain 
to sew the top edge around um, because the strap gets in the way no matter where you're going. But I'm very pleased with this. I used it as an overnight bag um, after a friend's giving. It fit a change of clothes overnight, heating pad, all the things I needed for, you know, sleeping over my sister's place and a knitting project in this bag. Um, the only change I would make if I were to make this again is make the straps a little bit longer. Um, it's fine for me if I'm walking around with it on just like this or with a light jacket on, but with a winter coat, this is not wide enough to put on easily. Like it fits really well like this, but there's not a whole lot of room here to wear a thick coat. Um, so something to be aware of. But overall, I'm very pleased with how this turned out, and I have plenty of this canvas left, so I can make another one if I really want to. Um, because I kind of panicked when I got to the fabric cutting corner, because I was like, I don't remember how big my pieces are. I'll get a yard of it. I did not need a yard of it. I think I used a third of a yard. <laughs> but, you know. Very pleased with how that turned out. Let me get these projects out of here before I need to talk about them. And then I finished a couple of uh, long sleeve t-shirts. I bought the um, Liesl & Co Metro t-shirt, um, which is a pretty basic t-shirt. It comes with the adjustments for a short sleeve if you want to do a short sleeve. Um, I did two versions. The first I did was this gray and black striped shirt, which I tried to match stripes, but it didn't really quite work. But when you're wearing it, nobody will notice. But if you look at it flat, you can... If you... Well, now this is all out of focus. Um, if you look closely, you can see that the stripe that connects the underarm seam to the other underarm seam is not even. So they're all slightly off, but whatever. Nobody's looking that closely. I've worn it to work and nobody noticed. So it's just a pretty simple... The only thing I did in the contrast was the neckband because I have... Pay attention. Telling my camera to pay I meant focus, but I told my camera to pay attention. Um, is this neckband, because this is a kind of a double knit fabric, so it's thicker than the rest of the fabric. But the, um, what are they called? Hems for the, the sleeve and the bottom is just a turned up hem. I didn't do any other finishing work on the inside. It's just sewn together using zigzag stitches. Um, and I do like this shirt. The pattern is a little bit slim fitting for me. Um, like the, shul the shoulders are great, sleeve length is great, the shirt length is great, but everything's a little bit more narrow than what fits me comfortably. So when I went to go do the second one, I added a half inch on either side I should note that part of that reason is the pattern calls for a quarter inch seam allowance, which I cannot for the life of me do with a knit fabric on my machine. It just pulls it down under the plate there. So I ended up doing closer to a half inch seam allowance, uh, between a three eighths and a half inch. Um, so that is part of the problem, that my seam allowances are larger than what the pattern calls for. So adding a half inch on either side is more like adding a half inch total to what the original pattern would be if I could get the quarter inch seam allowance, but I can't. So I added a half inch on either side to um, the sides of the front and back and the 
either side of the seam for the sleeve. And I made the shirt again using this Star Wars knit fabric, which I'm sure is intended for children's pajamas, but for me, I have a shirt. And this fits me much better, uh, especially because this fabric is a lot stiffer than this stripey fabric. This stripey fabric will, in time, as I wear it, loosen out some. It may take this a while because I think this also has some lycra in it or something because again, it's meant for children. <laughs> so it should, it, it's intended to be more hard wearing than clothes you would make for an adult. So, but it worked out really well and it fits great. And I'm super pleased. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish there were more Star Wars knit fabrics so I can make more Star Wars t-shirts for myself. Um, again, I use that same double knit black um, for the neckband, which I really like and I'm glad I have a bunch of that. I do have a problem with this hem flipping up, but I think that's just the nature of this particular fabric because of the kind of elastic content in it, but I'm super pleased with both of these and um, definitely a pattern to keep around. I did add to my pattern, add a half inch and where to add it so that I can make myself more t-shirts in the future. Um, yeah, really pleased with that. On to the parade of works in progress. I've been working on a lot of things, some of them new things, some of them very old things. Um, First thing I'm going to talk about is my granny stripe blanket, as it's the only crochet project I currently have. I'll show you the progress on this. Um, this is the granny stripe blanket by Lucy of Attic24. I'm using a USG 4.25 millimeter hook. I am marling um, some magic balls and magic cakes with some knit picks stroll fingering yarn and I think at this point I'm about a third the height that I want it to be so that's very encouraging. This little egg on toast this is where I was last time I showed this to you and I'm very excited because I finished all the advent minis from two years ago and I am this size for the magic ball that I'm working on now, which was originally more of a... It was hard to hold in my hand. That's how big it was. Um, so that's exciting, which means I can move on to these magic cakes that my sister Gabby from Once Upon a Corgi made me a million years ago. <laughs> I have no idea what's in them. So that'll be fun. That's making steady progress, which is great. Let's see how much of this stuff I can just shove under this little tray table I've got over here. Um, I've also dug out my cozy memories blanket, which I put away for a long time because it was super boring at the time. This project I've started um, practicing my English style knitting with. So if I need to rest this wrist, this hand can still do a little bit of knitting. Um, it's been a very long time since I've shown you this. Uh, it's a very strange shape. <laughs> and the goal right now is to kind of stair step it. Cause right now it's kind of a big L. I'm not sure they're both the size that I want. Oh, wow. This explanation is not working. Let me show you. So this is what I consider the bottom edge, but for the sake of showing you, I have three rows that are a very long rectangle. And then at some point I decided, since this is the bottom edge, that I would build up to get the other dimension. 
I don't think I've gotten to it yet, but this was starting to be, this little tail here was starting to become really annoying. So what I've started to do, and each of these charmed squares is a new square from the last time I showed you, is I'm trying to get it so that it's like this section and kind of stair stepping across. So, I don't know what any of these yarns are, except for a few of them. That one's a Star Wars mustache yarns colorway, but I don't know which one because there's only two colors in it. But each one of these ones with a charm. It's one that I've done since the last time I showed it to you. Out of focus. So that's a lot of squares, uh, considering the lack of knitting over the past year. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm hoping to put more progress in it as we go, kind of steadily. Um, I do have an advent calendar that I made myself with mini skeins. Um, this one is the first square of it. I'm not pushing myself to do a square a day because that's not going to happen, but I'm hoping that I'll have all 24 minis completed and in this blanket by the end of January. So if I can get 12 in during December and 12 in during January, that works for me. Put that over there. <laughs> so two blankets on the go, making progress on both of them, which is great. I've also been making progress on, this is going to go out of focus every time I turn, I'm sorry, on um, some vanilla socks. This is in my Matta Root Bees trundle bag. Um, these socks I started before I hurt my hands last year. Um, I had finished, I don't know if I showed you this, but I have finished this sock. I think that spoon is indicating where I was last time I showed this to you. Or at least where I was last time I podcasted. I don't remember. Those two sentences basically meant the same thing. But I finished one sock except for the heel, and I'm nearing the halfway point of the second sock minus the heel. I'll do true afterthought heels with these socks. So some progress has been made there, but I don't tend to pull those out to work on them a lot at this point, just because I do have the Cozy Memories blanket kind of actively being worked on, which is also a fingering weight yarn with the same size needle. I didn't mention the needle sizes. For the Memory blanket, it's a size 1 2.5 millimeter needle. For the socks, it's a US 0 2.0 millimeter needle, and I'm knitting those with my standard Continental. If I don't mention how I'm knitting it, Continental or English, it's Continental. Because English is the one that I'm learning. Uh, I also have another pair of socks that I've been working on. Um, these are what I'm calling my Palmer Ribbed Socks. Uh, there's a local farm. I say local. It's in Connecticut. It's, it's not like I can just take 10 minutes to go there. It's on the other side of the state. Um, but they have CVM and Rommeldale sheep. It's uh, Palmer Family Farms. I see their yarn at fiber festivals, at farmers markets, uh, on occasion in the local section of a yarn store, and I felt so bad for not buying from her at the farmers market this year because I usually do buy a few skeins from her at the farmers market, but I had two groups of yarns ready for um, socks that I hadn't knit because of hand issues last year. So these socks, here's the first one. This yarn is kind of a, I want to say a DK weight. I don't, I think she spins it herself is the thing. Because this is, I don't know if you'll be able to see. Let me 
I just leave my ends. Like it's not super even the way a commercial yarn is. I want to say she spins these herself. Um, at these, at least these particular skeins that I have. Um, so I have two skeins of this kind of rust color, and this is left over from previous pairs of socks. I'm trying to perfect my Palmer Family Farm sock recipe, because I do have a pair of socks in their wool that I love, but the leg falls down on me all the time. So, <laughs> so uh, that's why they're ribbed socks. So it's a one by one rib for the cuff uh, and a three by one rib for the leg. I used a fish lips kiss heel. Um, and you can see I did do the stockinette prep for the pre-heel and like I said, I'm using contrasting yarn left over from a previous pair of socks. So I finished the first sock and tried it on and I love how it fits. And so I'm, I've started the kind of stockinette pre-heel section on the second sock. Um, I'm using US 3, um, 3.25 millimeter needles. These are my Cubix needles, which are my favorite needles. Um, and yeah, I'm writing down this recipe, um, which I can't recall any of the details off the top of my head, but I will be putting it in my project page if you're interested in making a pair of socks like this, or at least getting some stitch counts or whatever, because um, I love this yarn and I have another set of skeins that are destined to become socks. And like, I want that to be an annual thing where I just buy a couple of skeins from her and I make myself a pair of squishy, warm, amazing socks. Because I love them. They wear so nicely. And I'm loving that project. That's, right now, that's kind of my Doctor Who knitting. Because Doctor Who is so good this season. Um, new project that you haven't seen that I've started, um, because since finishing that cardigan, uh, on the knitting machine, I have wanted to get another cardigan started. Um, but I'm trying to finish other projects I have slated for the machines. So I cast on this cardigan. This is the shag bark cardigan. Um, by Tien Foley, um, put out by Classic Elite Yarns. Uh, and I happen to be using Classic Elite Yarns uh, for this sweater. It's the uh, Mountaintop Blackthorn yarn in Wolf. Um, this is my monster swatch. It's a monster. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, my sister and my mom couldn't believe I was making a swatch this size, but, but I was using the same principles as the machine knitting swatches, which is to do a swatch that's like 40 stitches by 40 rows. I didn't even get 40 stitches across. This is like 36 stitches across because it's a bulky weight yarn. Um, but I especially wanted to do a big swatch for this project because there is alpaca content in this yarn. I don't remember how much, but let me see, do I have a tag in here? No, I don't have a tag in here. But it's enough that I know this sweater is going to grow with the weight of its own self um, because alpaca doesn't hold its shape very well. Um, which is also why I decided to go with this sweater pattern because it's very textured for the majority of the sweater. Um, so I feel like that'll give it a little bit of stability that it's got this texture pattern. So yeah, I have a monster swatch. And with this gauge, I went down, um, I think two needle sizes and my gauge was still a lot larger than what the pattern called for. So I did the math 
to get the size that I would want, I cast on the smallest size of this sweater <laughs> because my gauge is so loose. But I really like the fabric that it makes. And uh, actually last night I finished the back piece for the sweater. So that's the back which has some ribbing and this all over texture pattern uh, which is a broken garter rib. Um, yeah, it doesn't look that big right now, uh, but I know it's going to expand some and I figured, I, I know the length, it will lengthen as I wear it because of gravity, but I figured if it's not wide enough, I will just add like a garter panel to the sides <laughs> to make it wider. Um, it wouldn't even be that much. It would probably be like six rows of garter. But I honestly, I think, you know, if my math is to be trusted, it'll be just fine the way it is. So that's where I am with that sweater. Just the back piece finished. Um, but it's steady progress. And because it is a bulky weight sweater, it goes pretty quickly. Now this next project is my rice fields shawl, which is a brioche shawl pattern that I had started over a year ago, put away. I thought I had frogged it. And then I was thinking about it again and decided that I was going to restart it because I kept thinking about the pattern with these specific yarns. Uh, but it turns out I didn't frog it so I could just pick it up and keep going. So it's a semicircle shawl. You can do a half pie or a semicircle from what I can figure out from my notes. I'm doing a semicircle, so that's fine. And I need to switch out the cord on this. I do know that, but this is what it looks like. Uh, the colored yarns are legacy fiber arts in Hocus Pocus colorways. There's Mary Sanderson, Winnie Sanderson and Spellbook. And I'm going to keep cycling through those. And the black is Barocco Ultra Alpaca Light. And I am so pleased that I did not frog this because I really do like how this looks. So I had left it with one row of this green. And every once in a while I'll pick it up and put a row or two on. Um, this will not be a fast knit by any means because two color brioche, unless I learn single pass two color brioche, uh, takes twice as long. So that's that. Um, so that, that'll be a slow one. You probably won't see too many updates for that shawl coming up. I've also got a new project on the knitting machine on my uh, brother KH836E knitting machine. I am doing another uh, stockinette poncho. It's a schematic that came from uh, Snurb Yarn in a Facebook group post, I think, uh, just for the dimensions. It's two rectangles um, that are seamed in a way that makes a poncho. I'm using uh, Leading Men Fiber Arts uh, Ghost Light Base, which is a lace weight in the colorway Envy. So I've got the one rectangle. You can see a really it's really obvious on camera. It's not so obvious in real life. But I don't really care because it's a poncho. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a lace weight stockinette rectangle at the moment. And I bound that off last night. Hello. That's annoying. There was a snag. It's like a little knot where it got tangled. Oh well. I'm not going back to fix it because this is 626 rows of stockinette. Um. 
it was on a dial six, so it's still pretty airy and light. Is the nope swatch has gone missing. I don't know where the swatch is, but yeah, I found that I like wearing the poncho downstairs in my craft room because I have a DK weight one that I did out of leftover yarns. Um, but the DK weight is too heavy when the heat kicks in, so I figure a lighter one. would be nice to wear down there. Uh, I'm also planning on doing a sideways triangle shawl in this same yarn. I started with the one yarn that looked the most different, so when this yarn and the other skein I have go into the shawl, it won't have a jarring line like that, hopefully. Just because it's a pain to alternate skeins on that particular machine. I don't have a great way of moving the non-working yarn out of the way. <laughs> Something I'm working on. But yeah, so right now I have a big stock in that rectangle. So now we get into weaving. I have two weaving works in progress that have come off the loom. So the weaving is finished, but the project is not finished. So the first is the giant yardage for, I don't know what to call those pants. I have a pair of pants that I used to wear for, as part of Renaissance Fair costume. So they're like super baggy and kind of one size fits most. And they look like pirate pants. And I'm recreating them with wool <laughs> so I can have a pair for the winter. And I finished the yardage. It's a lot of yardage. Um, I did post a photo on Instagram. It is the length of my craft room all the way. I had to take a picture of it from another room. So this has been wet finished. Um, obviously woven. Um, woven, wet finished, taken off the loom. I'm just waiting for a booklet from Get Weaving with Sarah about different ways to kind of stabilize your fabric so that you can cut it. Um, I have done it before with, um, there's a pillow behind me and a couple of other small projects, but I just want to explore my options before I do anything to this yardage just because there is so much of it and I don't want to screw it up. Um, yeah, but that's finished and ready for the sewing part. And then when I finished my Marled Magic shawl, I decided to take a bunch of those kind of not quite mini skeins, but still scraps and weave myself yardage for a project bag. So warped up the loom and wove this. Um, this has a couple of different weights in it. There's some worsted weight here. There's some, where is it? This like a lace weight silk um, that I had spun and drafted out from silk hankies, um, which I don't like weaving with any more than I like spinning or knitting with. So that's fun. But, um, But yeah, varied warp, varied weft, bunch of different stuff. There's some hand spun in here. It's pretty cool. I did fringe one side of it. I'm going to leave the fringe on the front of the bag. Um, it's going to be a pretty simple zipper box bottom bag, but I wanted to have a bit with this uh, fringe twist, which I made using a fringe twister because I really do like how that looks. Um, so the other side is just finished and clipped short and that will be hidden uh, when I sew the zipper in. I have to pick a fabric for the interior of the bag. So it'll be like a sweater size project bag. So let's see. So it'll be about 
this size with a box bottom. So that's exciting. Uh, and also with the warp waist, um, cause that's the thing about weaving is there's always going to be warp threads that you don't end up using. You're either cutting it off or, um, it's just an awkward length that you don't really do anything with. So what I did, and this one still needs a little bit of a haircut, is I took some of the warp waist from that project and I made some pom-poms with it. These pom- You know, I trimmed these, I swear. They were just... That is the problem with making pom-poms from warp waist is they have bits that are all different lengths and uh, sometimes they don't come out until after you've trimmed them. Excuse me. <sighs> Leapt out of my hands. I'm just gonna pull those two out. So I just made some pom-poms from the warp waist. Some teeny ones, some kind of middling ones. And they don't really have a plan. Uh, I'll probably put a couple of them on my Christmas tree. I have some just um, hanging in the windows in my craft room. But that's an idea if you are a weaver and you want to do something with that warp waist. Uh, you can make some pom-poms. Do a pom-pom garland. That would be cool. But that's really it for weaving. Currently weaving is on hold because the table that I use for my loom is part of uh, holiday decorating, or it will be shortly. So the loom is kind of set aside for now. I am planning uh, more weaving projects. Um, my next project is either going to be kind of cotton towels or I'm going to start on the yardage for a new Renaissance Fair vest. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, I'll talk about that when I get to it. Um, I have been doing some spinning. Uh, I have been working a little bit on the Brown Cormo sweater spin on my Ashford Kiwi 2 spinning wheel, uh, but that's slow goings uh, while I strengthen up my abdominals and back from that whole injury so uh that's kind of slow going and not that that's a marathon not a sprint uh <laughs> but i have been doing some drop spindling so i was working on these kind of fall leftover bats uh drop spindling i've finished those and i've split it evenly and put it on these um storage bobbins but I can only show you one of them because the other one has started in on this. This is um, some fiber little batlings that I've made that I call Darth Scabrous back from when they were in my Etsy shop briefly. Um, I have three little bags of like two ounce bags of these. So I'm spinning these up myself. Um, and as I fill up my uh, drop spindle, I unload them off onto these storage bobbins. So there will be layers of singles on here, <laughs> uh, just because I didn't want to stop to ply them. So I'm still using my Turtle Maid Halloween drop spindle, which honestly is my favorite spindle that I have spun with thus far. The balance on this thing is awesome. It spins forever. So I'm very pleased with that progress. Uh, you'll probably see that for a while to come yet because I do have two more bags of those little bats, um, little two ounce bags of those bats to do, to go through. I'm just going through little battlings that I've made because, because I need to spin something. Might as well be those for now. <laughs> um, and I've also been quilting. I'll put up the video here, but I brought out one of the quilt tops that I had finished. Um, one of the Halloween quilt tops. It's the one with the kind of diamond shaped uh, quilt blocks on it. 
and I have basted it. Um, I'm using a purple and orange plaid cotton for the back. I was originally going to make a shirt in that fabric, but when I pulled it out, I was like, no, this needs to be a quilt back. It's kind of perfect for a Halloween quilt back. Um, so that's been basted and I have started the machine quilting, um, which you can see in that little thing. I can't really show you very much else because it's kind of in my sewing machine at the moment. So until I can get it out of, until I finish the actual quilting or get to a point where it's easy to stop the quilting, it's going to stay in that machine. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for sewing, I'm going to alternate, you know, a quilt, a couple of other sewing projects, quilt, a couple of other sewing projects. Um, just because getting a quilt in and out, like it's, it's easier to put away other sewing projects, but quilts are hard when you're in the middle of them. And that's it for works in progress. I do have one swatch of note. Um, I'm planning on doing some color work hats with my knitting machine, um, with the KH836E, which is a brother machine. Um, so I've done some swatches with some of the uh, punch cards. So there's one of them. And this is 40 by 40, 40 stitches by 40 rows. You can see that by machine, it's taller than it is wide. I feel like it's the opposite when I hand knit. So that'll be interesting to sort itself out. But I do really like how that pattern looks. I also like how this pattern looks. There was a bit of a tangle over here. Um, dropped some stitches, but easy enough to fix. There is this one, uh, which <laughs> I didn't engage the actual mechanism to move the card through the card reader. So like halfway through the swatch, I was like, oh wait, that's not actually moving. Um, so I don't actually have a clear idea of what this pattern is supposed to look like, but that's fine. I don't think it's um, what I'm looking for in a hat. Uh, and then this one, which I also really like, um, which is kind of like, broken up diamond. So these three, one, two, three, I'm definitely turning into hats. Um, I just have to get my measurements and sort out my hat pattern. Um, let me tell you, knitting color work on a knitting machine is super satisfying because you do practically none of the work. <laughs> the machine does it all for you, which means you also have Perfect floats. Like even where I screwed up, those are perfect floats. Which is pretty awesome. But that's the only swatch I have for uh, something in the future. Uh, which moves us on to other stuff. Uh, stuff I'm watching. I did go see Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Uh, I don't give spoilery discussions about movies, but I will say I liked it. I don't think it stands alone on its own. Um, it's definitely part of a larger whole, so I'm withholding a lot of judgment until I see later parts of this series. Uh, also, I was disappointed by the costume design. And that is what I'll say about that movie. <laughs> uh, but I will tell you this, the more official Harry Potter media I consume, the more I'm glad that what I remember about the series is mostly from fan fiction. Because at this point, fan fiction is about as credible as actual canon <laughs> of the Harry Potter universe at this point. So that's fun. Um, it's not in my notes, but I want to talk about it. This current season of Doctor Who with Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor has been awesome. 
I have to I have to put it out there. It's been amazing. If you've never watched Doctor Who before and you're a little curious, now is a great point to start on. It feels like the slate was wiped clean and all of our increasingly heavy baggage since the reboot of the show with the Ninth Doctor has just been like lifted away. <laughs> it's it's been fun and team I love Team Tardis. I have always loved Team Tardis. The show is the best when there's two or more companions with the doctor and there's three of them right now, which is fantastic. And it's it's a really good show right now. It feels the way watching Tom Baker era Doctor felt, or um, Peter Davison era Doctor felt. Like, it's a good old romp that sometimes gets you in the feels. Like, yes, yes, so good. Um, I watched Luke Cage season two on Netflix um, because I'm finally catching up on some of those shows that I was like, I'll definitely watch these, and then didn't watch. Um, And I watched Iron Fist season two. I had never intended to watch Iron Fist just because it had annoyed me season one, but season two was surprisingly good. I like Colleen as a character a lot. She's great. And she had a lot bigger part in season two, so. But I'm pretty sure all those shows are canceled because House of Mouse and Netflix are not the happiest of friends at the moment. Um, so right now I'm working on Daredevil season three and yeah, all those shows are probably going to be canceled. I think right now Jessica Jones and Punisher are still technically part of the Netflix family, but I don't see that happening. House of Mouse wants to open their own streaming service, so they're going to pull their stuff from everywhere eventually because that's what Disney does. Um, stuff I am listening to. Oh, I didn't update this from the past couple days, but that's all right. So I've listened to a bunch of new podcasts and by new, I mean new to me. I finally listened to Greater Boston, which is a kind of fiction podcast radio show for a slightly alternate Boston, um, which is right now hilarious because there's a plot to steal the Hartford Yard Goats, which makes me cackle internally at work as I could throw a rock at Dunkin' Donuts Stadium <laughs> where the Yard Goats play. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to say that it's a podcast for everybody because I feel like There's definitely some kind of reliance-ish on just, you know, Boston and New England kind of humor and in-jokes. Um, like, I know there's, you know, references to Boston stuff that goes over my head. Like, I know that's a Boston reference. I don't know what it's referencing because I don't live in Boston, but... Yeah, I feel like if you're not really familiar with this corner of the country, I don't think it's as relevant. <sighs> Words are hard. Um, I I just think if you if you're not familiar with this area of the country, you might be missing things. Um, but. It took me a long time to get into, but I, I really enjoy it now. Uh, I did start listening to and continue to listen to Waystation, which is a fan cast from the host of uh, the Spirits podcast uh, about the show Lost Girl, which I watched probably four seasons of. And then my brain was like, I think I'm done with this show. And that was about the point where I decided I'm no longer watching shows because I had started watching them. Um, yeah. 
it was about the same time that I had supernatural fatigue and I was like, I'm just, yeah. if I'm done with a show, I'm going to stop watching it. Nothing is making me keeping watching this show. So I think I dropped it around Lost Girl around the same time when I was doing that. But, um, but I like hearing them talk about it. So, and they're in season two now. So if I really feel compelled to watch the rest of the show, then I can do that. <laughs> But I don't think I will. I think I'll just listen to them talk about it. Um, and then I listened through uh, Someone Knows Something, which is a true crime investigative podcast from CBC Radio. Um, yeah, it's true crime investigation. If you're a true crime fan, it's definitely one to pick up. Uh, and then this one that I listened to called Celestial Blood is different from any other podcast that I've ever listened to. Uh, it's a self-described radio novella <laughs> uh, about these twins, Sol and Mundo, whose father Arturo had died and they find out that they have nine other siblings that they didn't know about, <laughs> all named after celestial bodies. And they have a series of letters that they want to deliver to their siblings that they didn't know anything about. It's like a telenovela, but a podcast. And it's great. Um, they also have a version in Spanish if you speak Spanish. So uh, super great. And it's, I want to say it's like nine episodes long. It's less than 20 episodes long. And it's a, a one and done story. So super great, super fun to listen to. Um, and now I'm working through Spines, uh, which is a story, it's a fiction story about a girl who woke up uh, covered in her own blood with these powers that other people don't have and she's trying to figure out who she is and where she comes from type of thing. Um, I think that one's also finished. And um, yep, just listening through that one, really enjoying it. I've also been on an audiobook binge. Uh, lately, it's been podcasts at work and audiobooks in the car. And I drive for at least two hours a day because my commute is terrible. And um, so I finished Aftermath by Chuck Wendig, which is a Star Wars audiobook narrated by Mark Thompson. And I love my Star Wars audiobooks. I really enjoyed that Star Wars audiobook. Um, I also listened to Yes, Please by Amy Poehler. Um, narrated by herself. Uh, and they're not in my notes, so I'm hoping I remember to put them in there. I've also listened to Not My Father's Son by Alan Cumming, narrated by the same person. Um, and uh, Carrie Fisher's Shockaholic, narrated by Carrie Fisher. Um, yeah. <laughs> Audiobooks are one of those things where I don't listen to any except for sometimes in the craft room for months and months and months. And then I listen to all of them in three weeks. So I'm on an audiobook kick right now. So that's what I've been listening to. Uh, and then stuff I'm reading. Again, I didn't add any fanfic to this month's podcast episode. If you guys are interested in the shorter podcast episodes, maybe I'll do fanfic talk then um i have been reading it i have been rereading it which is the thing is i like to reread stuff so i've already talked about it usually um but i did finish an actual book an actual physical hold in your hands book i had started turtles all the way down by john green a few months back uh i was not in the headspace to be reading that book um the main character uh, and his books are first person. So the main character was going is uh, somebody with uh, mental illness. I don't remember if they actually put the diagnosis, but there's wrapped up in it germophobia and kind of compulsive actions and thought spirals, which at the time when I started reading it, I was not in the headspace to read uh, because of I was in a thought spiral type issue myself at the time. Um, so I did end up getting nearly halfway through it at one point when I pulled myself out of it, but it was just, 
it's one of those books that you really have to be in the right headspace to read. And I actually finished it this morning. I woke up and it was, you know, those Sunday morning wake ups where you're just absolutely relaxed and you have no inclination to get up out of bed and you don't have to, you're not feeling the pressure to get up out of bed. I had one of those mornings, so I just finished the book. I was like, this is really the perfect headspace to be reading this book. I'm absolutely relaxed and I'm not stressed and I will finish this book. So I did. Uh, I'm hoping it won't take me as long to finish my next book because I need to get through this freaking series. Uh, this is book six of The Last of the Jedi. I have some more of these to go and they're sitting over there and I want to finish them because I love Star Wars and now I'm out of focus didn't know which face was real. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll get through a couple of these relatively soon before I pick up another book. I don't know, but that's where I am with everything. Really? That that's where I am. And that's kind of the end of this podcast episode. By kind of, I mean definitely the end of this podcast episode. One of those things that I'm watching to stop saying so much of. I say kind of a lot. So that's the end. Show notes and links and everything are over at freakishlemon.com. Also the transcriptions. Um, you can come join the group on Ravelry. Just search Freakish Lemon in the groups tab and you'll find us. If you want to follow me... At other places like Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, or Ravelry, I'm there as Freakish Lemon. It's a good time. Follow me on Instagram if you want pictures of my dog. That's the place to do it. She's adorable and ridiculous. Um, all these links to all these things will be in the down bar here on YouTube or somewhere around here if you're watching this somewhere else. And if you are here on YouTube and you want to keep following along with what I'm doing, uh, consider hitting that subscribe button so that you know when I post a new video. And reminder to let me know if you're interested in a 2019 blanket make along thread in the group on Ravelry. You can let me know on Ravelry or on YouTube or wherever you can find me. That's fine. Um, and also I want to know your thoughts on doing an in-between shorter episode uh, and what you would like to see on that episode. More kind of casual vlog type thing. Just let me know. Okay? Okay. That's it. Goodbye. <laughs>